mighty God, the powerful King. The Lord God who rules in the heavens and the earth. To you alone be the glory, the honor, the majesty, the power, and the kingdom. Forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Church shot a big amen. Welcome to today, first day of the establishment of that which God has for you. you saluted a kingdom salute to your neighbor in the house of the Lord find someone and salute them a kingdom salute to start tonight can we do five minutes of prayer that yes means you are very intoxicated with a lot of things of the world and the tiredness <laughs> give me a yes filled with the Holy Ghost certain things that can never be fulfilled until we reinforce it through prayer that the kingdom of God be established. <laughs> One of the key that we're going to fight now while I was in prayer Anyway, we need to pray for one of the ex-presidents of Kenya. Because I saw destruction entering their home. Big destruction. So, it is the duty of the church to pray. Why? Because no man comes in power without being mandated by God. The Bible says, In the day of kings Uzziah died, I saw the heaven. So, when king dies, it is an announcement of a new season. Also, of a good or a bad. So, we need to pray. 
the Lord shall show mercy in that family. I'm telling you, between 24 to 25, there's something the enemy is orchestrating to do in that place. Just raise your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, to show mercy so to the ex-president ex that the enemy, that the enemy is, looking, is looking or he has already prepared, has already prepared to destroy, destroy with sudden, sudden destruction, destruction sickness, sickness disease, disease brokenness. brokenness hear our prayer, prayer. lift your prayer lift your prayer Because I saw one of the political person in power in high offices, like a governor, the authority be taken away from him and withdrawn from him. We are going to pray that the righteousness of God shall be fulfilled in this land. Yeah. Even if the power has to be taken away, if that is the mandate of heaven, let it be so. Yes. But if that is demonic will, let it be aborted. Let's go on the bread. to go through something very very small but through that which it shall go through it shall bring a glory for it is written where the cloud of death was covering there came a great light there came a great light there came a great life. No matter what is ahead. Oh yes. No matter what has been orchestrated. Yes. For Kenya to go through. The Bible says, even if I go through the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Yes, Lord. 
whatever that the enemy orchestrated to cause, yes. let it turn for the glory of God. Yes, Lift your voice and begin to pray. <laughs> Sit in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. What are, are we here for? For there? Kingdom divine establishment. Jesus Christ is faithful yesterday, today, and forever. We are going to learn some of the things that will enable you and I to walk with a different perspective that many people in the world that are called Christian that they are not practicing rather they don't have the understanding and the keys of the knowledge of the kingdom the bible says that this was hidden to the prophets and to the ancient man 
but this has been revealed to the little children. The one little there, it doesn't mean that young children. It means to the humble. To the humble. Say, I am humble. And therefore, I receive God's word. You are humble, that's why you have found yourself here. The truth of the matter is this. Proudful people seek at not God. It's not their priorities. As much you bring the armor continually, it's not their priority. Prideful people, they seek not God as their first priority. As much they have the title of Christian, if God's kingdom is not your first priority, you are simply a Christian with a nice title, walking around, visiting churches every Sunday, accepting invitation when conference comes, but you are not recognized in the heavens. Jesus' words is serious. This is not Paul who said it. This is not John the Baptist who said it. Or rather one of the disciples, but Jesus himself. He said, many shall call upon my name. Many shall say, Lord, Lord. But I shall reply to them, I knew you not. Not I do not know you. I knew you not. So that means before even you to know me, I knew you not. But this is dangerous. He's not talking about to the unbelievers. Here, Jesus is talking to the believers. Are we correct? Because the knowledge of someone getting to the place to call on the name of the Lord, that means the gospel reached to you. Am I right? That means once in your life you have been in church. If not even once, all the time you have been in Sunday services. You call in the name of the Lord. So calling on the name of the Lord is not a guarantee of the kingdom. Anybody can call on the name of the Lord. But to them who live in the name of the Lord, they have a guarantee of the kingdom. There is those who call in the name of the Lord, but there is those who live in the name of the Lord. Jesus said in John chapter 17, he said, I kept them in your name that you gave to me. I kept them in the name that you gave to me. None of them was lost apart of the son of. So they lived, they abided, they dwelt in the name of the Lord. Are you aware that you can't do nothing in this world without a name? Am I right? It is the same thing with the matters of the kingdom. So that means a name is given to you and I so that we can function in the name, not just call in the name. It is different that your name is Njoki, okay? And then I utilize the name Joki to call on Joki when there is a problem that's only the name of Joki can deliver me. You understand? For example, I can find myself in a particular government's offices whereby I want to utilize a name that I know. You understand? To gain access into something. But I am not born of the junkie. Are we, now, are we making sense? So, I can call on the name of Njoki and then a door can open. Are we right? A door can open, but I am not a part of the family of Njoki. So the day the family of Njoki or the owner of the name of Njoki comes, he will only take that which are 
carrying the name of Njoki in their passports, in their identities, and in their family bloodline. And yet, me who has just utilized Njoki, a door can be open. That's why don't get excited when you encounter an open door. Anybody can encounter an open door. Don't get excited when you can pray and then you get a job. Anybody has a job. Don't get excited when you can pray or a man of God encounter and prophesy. Hey, you shall be married by next year, by this time. You shall be married. Hey, anybody can be married. Even the pagans are getting married. Nothing exciting. To you, yes, because it's a prayer and answer. It's simply open door, but it is not a guarantee for the kingdom. Because you have utilized the name of Jesus. And this is why most Christians are dwelling in the place of utilizing the name, but they don't want to live in the name. There is a greater guarantee of God's faithfulness when you find yourself living in the name of the Lord. And that's what the Bible says in the book of Acts, there were those that were called the seven sons of Siva. They say, in the name of the Lord that Paul preaches. So that means they use the name of Njoki, but they are not a part of the family of Njoki. And the demon recognized Paul because he had Njoki in the family bloodline. Are you understanding that? I pray that in these two days, your life shall shift. Why, but even if you mama just the name of Jesus, the whole heaven is coming to surround you. Born. This is the reason why they say, born of the kingdom. Born of God. Born again. Or born of the spirit or born of water. We are going to go through, if God allows us, in the short time we have, on how to dig deep into this praise be the name of the lord so there is a guarantee every time we dwell in the name of the lord or rather being baptized in the name of the lord so that's mean the name of jesus christ is attached in your life in every side when i open my hands the name of jesus when i close my eyes the name of jesus the bible said there is a name that is given to us that at the mention of this name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, of things in heaven, in the earth, and beneath the earth, to the glory of the Father. So when we are baptized in the name of the Lord, you do not need to impose your authority. You are the authority. You understand? You are the authority. And that's what the Bible says, by the presence of Jesus Christ entering the synagogue, demons were cast out by not saying, I will not come out. But they were cast out by confirming you are the son of God. And like our generation, demons are coming out by saying, no, sitoki, sitoki, sitoki. But in the time that Jesus Christ came, the Bible said they are coming out by shouting, you are the son of God. The holy son of God. What are we to recognize a son of God. And people are struggling with the crisis of identity when it comes to the kingdom of God. Because of what? Lack of focus and lack of connectivity to the family of God. Because if I'm born of the family of God, the same result is supposed to be so. I am not supposed to struggle with demons. Neither to struggle with matters to resist me. The system of the world can be in place, but it cannot resist the mandate that I carry. It shall come to pass. And as a child of God, you impose changes. You do not wait for change. You impose changes based on the season that are birthed in your spirit realm. Glory to God. 
so that means by the capacity of your fellowship and your deep intimacy with the holy ghost you can shift seasons in your life based on the dimensions of the communication that the spirit is communicating to your spirit man that means this man we saw him one week ago and suddenly things are shifting you understand and yet there are some who are called christian they are still waiting for change they come sunday they come they go for retreats they mount the mountain it's okay but they are waiting for change it is a wrong way of understanding the power of the kingdom what a way of prayer that jesus prayed there is no higher and glorious prayer in the bible like the prayer of jesus Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in another word, your prayer is not to bind, to fight, but your prayer is to bring a kingdom to rule as long as you are on the earth. You understand? So in another one, you are imposing your rule, imposing how your life should go, not how system, the economy, the system, the political system are demanding for you and I to go. No, you are imposing the kingdom where you are born, your family. This is why I'm born. This is how things go in my family. This is how we eat in the morning. This is how we eat lunch. This is how we eat dinner. This is how we drink. This is how we sleep. We are not intimidated by the system of the influence of the world. Why? Because I am not a part of this world. And that's why Jesus said that we are in this world, but we are not of, of. So that means not born of this world. Anything of, that means born. We are not of this world. We are not born of this world, but you are of the kingdom of heaven. If I want you, I'll shout it too. Amen. yeah and you confirm it where in the book of john he said you are not born of the will of your parents hey i'm not born of the lutukas no away from me it's simply a simple idea <laughs> but i'm born of the will of god are you understanding me i am born of the will of god my name is the name of jesus the name of my children is the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Say my name, my name. is no longer. No. Mention that name. But say my name is the name of Jesus. What a conscience. What a way of thinking. Imagine if you have such a mindset. How far are you going to be? If you had this mindset 10 years ago, how far are you going to be today? Which demon is it going to resist you? Because any identity changes your function of economy. Because if there is a name given to me in America, I am a part of any social things that have been happening there. Any distribution of money, I can call for it even here in Kenya, it's coming. Because of the identity I received from America. I see a shift coming in your spirit, man. I see a shift in the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me, somebody? This is a very powerful, very powerful session. Very powerful. I mean, this is what changes life. Now, guess what? Can I take you a little bit for a journey? The Bible says, seek he first, isn't it? Seek he first, the nation of Kenya. Seek he first to go to America. Seek he first to step in Europe. Seek he first to be a millionaire. 
Now, but the Bible says, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. Not just the kingdom, but the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, the rest. The rest. Automatically, it turns away like the wheels that move when the spirit moves in heaven. You remember the wheels that Ezekiel the prophet saw? The Bible said the wheel follow where the spirit led them to move. So automatically, when the spirit moves, the wheels move with them. And that's the same thing the Bible said. When you found the kingdom, the rest, the wheels will catch up with you. Are you understanding that? So that means no thing, nothing even, let me say like the Niger, no, no thing will ever miss the one who has not just found the kingdom, but the one who has the kingdom. I told you on Sunday there is a difference between those who are found and those that are born in the kingdom. Seek he first the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, seek he first the kingdom. And his righteousness. And the rest shall follow you. Now, number one, you cannot seek that which is called a kingdom unless you seek first the king. Can I repeat? You can never seek a kingdom unless first you seek he who is the king of the kingdom. Okay? Number two, you cannot enter a kingdom unless you are accepted by the king of the kingdom. Are we together? So you are supposed to be recognized by the kingdom and your ability to be recognized by the kingdom is your ability to be known by the king. So if I say that I found the kingdom, so that means I found the king. And that's what the Bible said. The first man that Abraham encountered, it was Melchizedek. And he was the king of Salem. So the king of peace. And Salem is the short name of Jerusalem. And the Bible say he had the title. That title was one, the great priest. He was a great priest. And he brought Abraham a holy communion, wine and bread. He introduced the headmaster of his kingdom which is jesus to abraham and he said abraham by you entering a covenant with me out of you <laughs> shall be born a king that shall rule all the tribes of israel <laughs> but before to do so you must accept this bread and this wine and the Bible says he brought it as a significance of honor for the victory that Abraham had. With who? With the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and the rest. Praise be the name of the Lord. Please let's minimize some movement. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Watch me. When you found the king, I found the kingdom. If I meet the king, automatically I meet the kingdom. When I become a friend of a king, I am now a friend of a kingdom. And that's what the Bible says, Abraham was called a friend of God. And by being a friend of God, the Bible says a bosom was given to Abraham. 
that every saint who died in the Old Testament, they went not in hell, but they went in the bosom of Abraham. What a way of living life. Why? Because Abraham found the king. And since he found the king, the kingdom was given to him. Praise be the name of the Lord. Say, I'm founding the king. By the spirit of God. Then how the king be? This is something that we are going to see. Who is this king? The king of glory. Oh, you gates. Come on, who can repeat me that? Lift up. Mm -hmm. Oh, he. For. 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 Mm -hmm. Son. Who is this king of king? The Lord God. Can you help them? That's a very powerful thing. Because this is what happened when Jesus resurrected. Before him to enter heaven, there was an announcement. They asked, who are you? For us to open the heaven for you to enter with this man. Anyway, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Lift up your head. Lift up. Oh, he gates. Your head. Oh, he gates. So that's when gates has heads. So that's when behind every gate, there is an entity behind. So that's when behind the gate of this nation, there is a head. Behind the gates of Nairobi, there is a head. Until you conquer the heads, you cannot enter. But here, here, the Bible says, lift up once your heads. Oh, you gates. And be lifted up. You everlasting door. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the king of glory shall come in. Uh -huh. And then he said, who is this king of glory? So they're asking, who is this king of glory? And they say, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Ay, 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 ay. I love this Jesus. When this scripture came alive, this scripture came alive the day the Bible said Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The Bible said when everybody's are going to hell and men that were holy, they were going to the bosom of Abraham. So in another word, they did not enter heaven. Neither they have seen God. But the Bible said when Jesus Christ died and he went in hell and the Bible said he liberated the prisoner which are holy people. They were kept in the prison. And the Bible says it set them free by messing principalities and powers and putting them under his feet. And the Bible says not just that, he went ahead and took the key of death out of the hand of Lucifer, who is called Satan, the great dragon. And the Bible says after taking the keys, he said, no, you devil, come here. Drag yourself behind me together with all your principalities and powers let them follow and the bible said there was what a convo whereby he's running and running and running with you and i now the bible said when he resurrected the bible said the day he resurrected the bible said people so holy man holy man holy man coming out of the grief they encountered Elisha. They encountered David. They encountered Abraham. They encountered Isaac. The day Jesus rose, they rose as well. And the Bible said they went in the place where they were living before. And the Bible said men saw them. If you don't believe this, that means you are an unbeliever. And the Bible said they saw them. And they talked with them. And the Bible said they spent some time on the earth. And the day Jesus Christ came in Mount Olive. He stood there. The Bible says suddenly it began to be elevated, elevated, elevated. There is no man, not even Elijah. Elijah has not been elevated. Enoch was not elevated. Enoch was taken. Elijah was taken. Noah was taken. 
but Jesus Christ was elevated. It shows that he's the king of kings. I don't need the help of the chariot of angels. Listen, you have a powerful God. The way you are clapping, you have to clap well for Jesus Christ. The Bible says he was getting elevated by himself. Himself is going, he, hey, he is moving. Without any help. And the Bible said all the angels were standing in the sky. Watching him without any help. Telling them that I am the one who made you and gave you the ability to fly. Learn from the best I'm getting elevated. In fact, there is no angel. There is no archangel. Neither Seraphim has ever done that. Been elevated and been taken. They'll come and disappear. They'll come and go faster. But him is going slowly. Aye. The Bible said they, their eyes were fixed. So that means their eyes were fixed. They are watching him. How he's going. How he's going. How he's mounting. How he's going. Listen, that's what David said. My enemy shall not die. You shall see me glorifying God and receiving God's greatness. <laughs> hallelujah and the bible said their eyes were kept there peter john all of them they are just oozing their eyes on him and staring at jesus thinking maybe he might fall thinking maybe there is a rope like what in america i'm seeing a video why a pastor's wife by a rope is holding him and he's moving around that's not jesus I remember the one I was growing up, there was a religion in Congo whereby someone who taught and called himself a God. And he was manifesting some powers like the sorcerer in the book of Acts. People were scared of that guy. And many people were following him. He was called and they were calling him God. And then he said, this is the day I'm departing. Guess what? He gave people rendezvous in a particular place. This is Congo. True story. He gave people a rendezvous. He said, today I am getting elevated in your eyes. True story. All his believers, they came. And he had people. When I say he had people, guess what? He stood. When he stood, he started getting elevated. True story. He came here. God is watching him. He came here. God is watching him. He got to the roof. People are like, no. People, everybody is bowing. They start saying, this is a true God. God was waiting for him. <laughs> and then he got like on top of a fifth level building or seven level building. People don't know he's about to disappear. Suddenly, for their shock, I don't know what went wrong. Maybe one demon lost the hand. The guy fell from up until down. True story. A few days, the guy died. The religion is dead. It's a place to clap for Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching me, you are here. There is no religion whereby their master has been elevated. There is no place in the world, no president, no king, that have been elevated. There is nobody in history is the only king. Even us, we shall be taken. It's only given to the Son of God to be elevated. And the Bible said he was elevated and all eyes were on him. And the Bible said when he got in the highest place, oh my God. So that's me when he crossed the first heaven, he's still moving slowly. And all the stars are looking at him. This is the guy we have been waiting for. The moon, the sun, they are looking at him because he wanted to give a proper testimony that I am not here by mistake. Neither by surprise. Watch me that I am the king who have made you. And he's moving slowly, witnessing his presence in the first sky, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, to the place where God wanted him to be. What a way to go. What a way to go. The 
Bible says suddenly, I like the scripture when it says suddenly, the cloud covered him. The cloud covered him. Now that is the word I wanted. The cloud covered him. I looked at that word and I saw it in the book of Hebrew. The Bible called it the cloud of witness. The cloud of the witness. The cloud of the witness. And this cloud of the witness, that means is the sense that lived in the past and proclaim and testify of the truth of Jesus, of the Son of God. Isn't it? And the Bible said that they were where? In, a, in the bosom of Abraham. Locked in the prisons. And when Jesus Christ rose, guess what? They were on the earth with him, isn't it? Until the day he started getting elevated in Mount Olive. Say Mount Olive. And the moment he's getting elevated, and guess what? The saints were already in the cloud. David was already in the cloud. Isaac was in the cloud. So that means they were watching how Jesus Christ is getting elevated. Yes. Moses was in the cloud. Everybody was in the cloud waiting for him. Why? Because once he got into the place where they were waiting for him. How did I know? Because the Bible says we shall join him as well in the cloud. The Bible says, when the righteous shall come, we shall join him in the cloud, not straight in heaven, in the cloud. For a thousand times of party. So that means they were waiting for the master in the cloud. And they are looking at him how he's coming. He said, hey guys, we made it. David is like, I didn't follow in vain. I didn't go to church in vain. I didn't give in vain. I didn't fast in vain. I didn't trust this God in vain. I didn't come on Wednesday in vain. I didn't come on Saturday in vain. But this is the result. I am in the cloud. Watching the king of kings getting elevated. What a way. I didn't clean the church in vain. Coming on time in church was not in vain. It has paid me. What a way to be blessed. When everyone are discouraging you in this time, why are you so holy? They even tell you, you are so holy for us. And you, you are feeling like, yes, I think I'm very holy. And the Bible says, when he got in that cloud, and he said, now guys, let's go. And then guess what? He got now to the gates of heaven. And they ask the, the, the angel who keeps the heads of the gates, who keeps there. He said, who are you? Now they answered what? The king of glory. <laughs> it's like the caretaker now, Lisa. Nina, who are you? And then the people answer. The angels are answering. And the witness, they are answering. You guys. We have the king of kings with us. The Lord of lords. We have seen him being elevated. Lift up your head, you gate. And be lifted, you everlasting door. So that means you have been there for long, shutting our way. I pray that if that door, that ancient door, that has been shut for age, Tonight, let it be lifted up. I pray that there shall be an open door. The moment we are saying amen in this two days, let the doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. So that means all that time, that gate was not opening because they needed a king to open it. It's like when you are coming to your house. And when you send someone else in the house, and that's why when Jesus came, he said, anybody and everyone who came before me, they use the window, not the gate. But I, I am the gate. So that's when, when I come, no gate shall be shut. When anything resists you, the question is, he who is with you? 
Bible says, when he stood in that gate, things start speaking on behalf of himself. Be lifted, everlasting now. <laughs> and the king of glory shall come. And now look at the caretaker and Uliza Sasa. Twenty. 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 Hey, you are caught up. Lift up. Uh -huh. He said what? Lift up your head, O your gates, uh -huh. and be lifted. Uh -huh. You everlasting doors, uh -huh. and, and the, the king, king of glory, of glory shall, shall come, in. come in. And the caretaker and who is him. this king he of said, glory? Who is? Ni nani who you? Who is the king of glory? And now the answer: The, the Lord, Lord, the strong and mighty. We have witnessed him climbing, going up. They said, "The Lord. It's not David. This is not Elijah. This is not Moses." This is not so and so. This is not Josaphat. This is not Isaiah. This is not Amos. This is not Obadiah. But this is the King of Glory. Let there be an answer over that door that has been closed. Yes, Lord. in your life, O oh Lord. Yes. Let the King of Glory access it. Yes, Lord. And he said, the king of glory, the Lord, the strong, the mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. That means he conquered the devil in hell. We have witnessed him opening doors for us, crushing Lucifer, taking away the key of death. That means you cannot die prematurely because he has the key. You control the powers of death. You control the gates of death. No wonder he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Why? Because I have the keys. No, you can't die. Say, I can't die. I can't die. The King of Glory. Hi. And suddenly, guess what? The gate. Open up. Lift up your head. Oh, you gate. Lift up your everlasting door. And the King of Glory shall come in verse 10 says what who is this again the king of glory the lord no they are the lord of this now the mighty angels now they start answering oh, yes. the lord of hosts now this one i think david was a part of this he remember goliath when he said goliath i am coming to fight you in the name of the lord of hosts David was a part of this statement and he's the king of glory sailor so that's mean think about it ah this Jesus he's not small like some people are quitting Christianity thinking like I need come on religion in Guinea this is not religion you are dealing with the king of kings Baba wangu Siwezi pata kama wewe Mungu wangu Mungu wangu Siwezi pata kama wewe Sit down for a minute Now we know who is the king. Then what is the agenda of the king? Can I start my message now? Because since we cannot found the kingdom without finding the king, the person to examine it here, we should know who is the king. And guess what? Watch me. This king made this statement. Hear this. This king made this statement. He said, nobody. He wrote it as a law. He said, nobody on the earth and in the heaven, no angel, no archangel can ever see my face and live. What king is this? He said, nobody. No one. 
no one is allowed to see me and live. And the Bible said, Moses, he said, Father, how can I say that I have your favor? How can you tell me that you favor me if I cannot see your glory? And he said, it is true. I will show my glory. I will show mercy to whomsoever desire to show mercy and compassion to whom I desire to show compassion. And the Bible said, God said to him, I will pass by and I will hide you with my hands. Go next to the rock, which is next to me. The rock is Jesus. So that means the rock is enjoying to see the face. Because if he said the rock is near me, so that means the rock is enjoying every time to see the God. And the Bible said, God passed. And Moses saw the back. Why the back? Because you shall tell how things began, not how things will finish. But you shall announce of the coming of the second Adam, which is say, a prophet shall come. So he didn't have even a proper revelation of who is the Messiah the way you have. Hey. Moses knew the king. And he presented the law to the people, not the king. And the Bible says every time he'll appear before the people, he will hide his face so that people may not see what he saw. He saw the king, but he presented to the people the laws. And that's what the Bible says. You reveal your will to Moses, but your deeds to the Israeli people. Deeds is just works. So that's when I'm doing a lot of works and you are getting satisfied, but you do not know the will of God. And that's why don't get satisfied when you see deeds at work in your life. Be satisfied when you know the perfect will of God. which is in the book of Psalm 103, you read it, that you reveal your will to Moses, but your deeds to the Israelites. Are you getting something? Are you getting something? And then, the king said to himself, before the kingdom of heaven to be, or rather, let me say, before heaven to be created, what was in rulership, what was in existence, sorry, not to call it in existence, what was in eternity, it was the kingdom of God. I'll repeat that. Before the kingdom of heaven to be in existence, what was in eternity was the kingdom of God. Are they two things different? No. The kingdom of God has bought the kingdom of heaven. Because heaven is a location, but the kingdom of God is an invisible place, which has no location you can identify where it is. But it is above. What am I talking about? Matthew spoke about the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near you. The kingdom of heaven is here near you. Mark comes and speaks about the kingdom of God. Are we together? So we have the kingdom of heaven. We have the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is the mother, is the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is the place where the creation beings are there. How do I know? The Bible says, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created, number one, the heavens. So that means there was a time there was no heavens. Okay, Genesis. Some people are looking at me like, I've already taken enough. Can you just close? And <laughs> because you look and tell me, <laughs> you start now flying your own way. In the beginning, uh -huh. God, God created, created what? The heavens. Come on, read it all. In the beginning. Say it again. In the beginning. Say it again. In the beginning. Say it again. In the beginning. Uh huh. God created. Who, cre who is that? God. Say the king. The king, Say the king. The king did what? Created. Created what? The heaven. The heavens and the earth. Now the problem: any creation must generate from a place. And if I'm creating something, it must originated 
from a particular place which is already in existence are we together so that's mean god created the heavens so that's mean the heavens don't mean many heavens god created the heavens and then after the heaven he created what the earth so that's mean there is only one earth there is no up to earth there is no three earth but yet there is many heavens hold my head hold, hold your head hold my head okay he said in the beginning i've created the heaven so that's when i began with the heaven i saved the government i saved the kingdom in the place and my kingdom is already ruling the heavens but there is a particular place called the earth and i desire to extend my royalty my dominion and my kingdom to a particular place called the earth and guess what i want to release someone in the place and the first person he released it was lucifer someone know some, one person know i'm a rudy hey. <laughs> the first person was sent it was lucifer ezekiel chapter 28. can i close here Lucifer was sent on the earth because God created the heavens and then suddenly we found there was darkness. There was darkness. There was darkness. Verse 2. There was darkness. Where did it come from? God never creates anything empty. So that's when there was a great delusion took place. How do I know? What is darkness? The Bible said, Behold, be aware that is like the angel of light that turned as the angel of darkness. So that means he brought darkness when he fell. And yet he was treading. He was treading. Ezekiel chapter 28. He was treading between heaven. Please read it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Read it. Son. The Bible says. You were where? You were where? <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 28 verse. Come on church. Can you read with me? You oh are... come. I need high energy. Can you read here? Yes. Are you receiving the kingdom? Oh yes. Uh -huh. The Bible says what? You, you are, are in Eden. Eden was where? The garden. Come of on, God. Eden was where? Where was the location of Eden? Come on, talk to me like someone is confidential. Or Did not. you succeed in school? Yes. Did you really succeed? Yes. Were you a clever boy when the, the teacher is talking to you? Yes. Okay, then let's let talk, talk back to me. He says, What? You are what? In Eden. So, where was Eden? Ah, ah isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh, let's go. The garden of God. The garden of God every precious stone uh -huh. was your covering. was your covering the sardius uh -huh. topaz, topaz a diamond diamond buried buried on it on it jasper jasper sapphire mm -hmm. turquoise yes emerald emerald with gold with gold you finish it with gold uh-huh the workmanship of you uh-huh of your tambours uh -huh. and, and pipe was what prepared, prepared for you on the okay. day you were Created. created so that's mean this being don't be shaken he was also created so that's mean there is a god who knows how he function that's why he's not shaken so i will not be shaken i will not be shaken he was created uh-huh let's go you are the anointed cherub he was an anointed cherub so he knows what is the anointing and he knows what the dimension of the anointed what they do all right let's go who, who covers I, I, uh -huh, let's go i establish you you are you are on the holy mountain of god yes you are back and back and and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth in the midst of the fiery stone where was this stone in the garden of eden so that means he was moving between the earth and heaven. Between the garden and heaven. Trading. He knows what is business. The moment you understand this scripture, business shall be open to you. And I pray by the enlightenment of this ministry now, you shall be in that category of grace in Jesus' name. <laughs> so that means he was hey my goodness in the midst of what the fearing stone so that's mean he knows what is the fearing stones okay he went on again verse 15 let's go you are where 
perfect. He knows what is perfection. You are perfect in all your ways. From the day you were created. From the day you were created. The guy knows what is perfection. That's why in ministry we need perfection. Hmm? If he knows perfection, how can he not be perfected? Hallelujah. Until what? Till iniquity was found in you. Till iniquity was found in you. Till iniquity was found in you. So the number one guy who had the mandates to control the earth, the place where God desired to extend his kingdom, okay, the same way he did in the heavens, he desired to do the same thing on the earth. The number one guy who was there was Lucifer. That's why when he saw Adam, he got annoyed. How come this guy has taken my place? Because where is the, this serpent coming from? The Bible did not record it. The Bible says suddenly the serpent was there. So that means he knows the system of the earth. He was there. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. So you are dealing, or oh, Jesus Christ closed the chapter of this guy who was at work since the ancient times since the ancient times and then the bible says suddenly when iniquity was found in him darkness was covering him the beauty that he carried was no longer there the awesomeness that he was carrying was no longer there and the bible says he was cast down from the heavens to where on the earth and that by that casting down the darkness that was in him the iniquity that was in him the pride that was in him he carried it inside of himself and guess what he imparted it to the person called eve and then eve why because eve she is a keeper she could have gone to adam because adam is never a keeper but eve is a keeper so eve had to keep he needed a place where there is a kingdom to keep his knowledge and then there was not a better being to keep it because Adam is simply there moving. But Eve keeps the things. And then him also, he needed a helper. And the helper was not Adam. The helper was Eve. So he brought his knowledge to the person called Eve. And Eve kept it. And Eve got pregnant of the will of Lucifer. And then Eve transmitted the message of the kingdom of Satan to Adam. Because Adam was the king of the earth. And if he accepts, that means the knowledge that Eve is pregnant with shall be automatically entered in power and rulership on the earth. So that means if I accept this knowledge from Eve, automatically I, I bow. I, I, come on, are you understanding me? and that's for a proof why by samson with all the power he had until the day he gave heed to listen to dalila automatically the power to be deceived entered samson and the power that was in him departed are you, are you getting me are you not lost you're here with me right and the lord saw he said my goodness the system of my kingdom what is happening i desired to extend heaven on the earth i desired to extend heaven on the earth so that's been earth to become another part of heaven with the rulership of the headship of the person called the messiah okay let me help you i know you have been lost a bit it's a bit very important or maybe it's your time of sleep anyway <laughs> let me give you an example all right come come with me for you to have a better understanding okay i told you the kingdom of god is what was what let me see the clear one. Huh? Thank you. Now it gives me the energy to move. God bless you. Someone knows he's awake when the question is coming. <laughs> hey God, oh God help your people. Everything is taught, but they can't listen. I pray that you shall hear. 
Because this exam, eh, it's an exam. Because you can't cross there unless you understand. Imagine in all the earth, this message is preached here in this particular place. So that means God has his candidate people here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen. The kingdom of God is invisible. It has no location we can point is over there. It's just in a particular place. And the kingdom of God is Papa God. Say Papa God. No, no, you are not saying properly. Say Papa God. So Papa God is an invisible. And he said a statement that no man can ever see my face and, and, and live. And guess what? He said, I create the heavens come to an existence. Heaven came to. So he extended his invisible kingdom into another invisible kingdom. Okay? This kingdom of heavens is also what? Invisible. Isn't it? But this kingdom of God is more invisible than how visible is this? This is the heaven you are looking to enter. It's not the all. Papa God is here. Where the heaven is wishing to see him, but they have never seen him. But he can see the heavens. And then after creating the heavens, what does it mean? The first state, the second state, the third state, all the heaven people think they are seven or ten. It's okay. But it's still not the kingdom of God. Invisible. And then from these heavens, he created the earth. Atikoapa. Uko, isn't it? And then in the earth, he desired these same heavens to impart the same nature to the earth. Now it's making sense. And then he said, how can I make the heavens reach the earth? So out of the heaven system here, he picked a being that he created called Lucifer. That was called the star of the morning. He sent him. And that is the same title Jesus also had, the star of the morning. Lucifer was sent on the earth. And he was doing what? Trading between heavens and earth. Tukupamoja. And then guess what? He failed the mission. Iniquity was found in him. He became proud. He said to himself, I will rise up, build up a throne for myself. And I will be like the more, most high, who sit above. He doesn't even know where. He says, sit above. Hey, Jesus Christ. Are we together? And then he failed. So there is no way for him again to cross in existence in this place and then god said to himself it is not good for the world to remain empty and void he created he said this time no i will not send an archangel neither seraphim that's what the bible said even to the angel they're not holding the eyes of god that's angel that you get shaken they're not holding the hand of god and he said this time the bible said, no, in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 let us make man in our own image and in our likeness and let them have what let them have what the word domino that means let them have kingship are we together so that's been the ability of kingdom started since genesis chapter one god vision is always kingdom no church Church is a gathering for us to empower us to go and dominate. Church in mind. And he said to them what? God, you are in my likeness and my image. Now I'm sending you so that you can bring the beauty of this place to this place. And he sent him there. He said, what? He said what? Cultivate, dominate, and multiply so that means from the garden called the eden turn the whole earth to the beauty of that garden
I'm closing anyway in a few minutes. I know you look. And guess what? This first Adam came where? On the earth. He did what he could. And then guess what? He did what? He failed. And the Bible said God regretted. He didn't regret when Lucifer failed. Now you see how important your image is in the eyes of God. You see how close you are in the heart of Elohim. That any angel can fall, he does not shake God. Any angel can betray God, he does not shake him. It's like people that are created whereby God just sees their servants, but they are not beings that are connected to my love. But look at the way you pray for you to see angels. When a prophet comes and says, see angels, oh my God, how do you see angels? But they are not perfect in the eyes of God the way you are perfect in the eyes of God. <laughs> Say, I am perfect because of the blood of Jesus in the eyes of God. So you remember the invisible made the invisible to the visible. And the purpose of this invisible is what? To extend what? His dominion. His political system. God loves politics. For you not, for some of you, you hate politics. He loves politics. He extended his political capacity and system. Sorry, I use that word mafia. I told I like the movies that are mafia. Why? It's, it's because there is someone manipulating the system yet you can't see him. You, you know, you can grow in a system, in a business where you are, man, you are, you are, you are, you are just touching businesses there and the people are wondering who is working. But you are there behind the scene. Are you understanding? The reason why politicians, they don't want to enter into business and buy building, they will utilize people that they are connected. They are buying on their behalf but you enter in covenant. That is God. He said, Abraham, do everything, but I am with you. I'll give you the nations of the world, but I am with you. I'm controlling. You will love politics after today. And are you aware that the people who control nations, they are never on TV? Yes, sir. Thank you. People who position this president, they are never on TV. They come and beg them. Can you give us money for us to do this? And you see, it's only four people who control the whole Kenya. <laughs> that they want to bring the shilling down. That's anyway, that's a system that took place. Anyway. <laughs> Why? Because men, money is power. So when they have money, they can bring down so that they can, they can frustrate the government of someone. So that the person can bow in their system. Why? Because if you don't position the people that we want there, then you collapse. And guess what? The government will do something. We will go behind the scene to borrow somewhere else so that they can gain strength. That's why the shilling came up a bit. Anyway, let's go. Are you understanding me? So the invisible. You, people are controlling the system. But they are not there. People are powerful. Why the president, when they see their call, the president is shaking. But they are not there. People who empower these bonds in the government. And when they remove it, everybody cries. And you are coming just in church here. Hey, Gary, Kato, Rati. Why are those people? They should be here seated. I, I, are, you, are you understanding what I'm talking about? Imagine if we have such people raised in this church. You are controlling the country without you being on TV. I don't like you, amen. Anyway. Some of you are, you, you are giving that look of religion. No, 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 no. You know God himself, he knows the way. Anyway, tomorrow I'm coming to teach you. <laughs> because when we have this system in our hands, men that are controlling the system in the country, the gospel shall progress. Do you know how many countries where they can't confess the name of Jesus because the guy is giving them money, he doesn't like that name. Go to America. Who is controlling that Bible? I was in 
Atlanta and Washington. And I told you I met the guy who's going to be who is preparing to be the president in Cote d'Ivoire. And I told him, I said, sir, you are going to be the president in Cote d'Ivoire. He said, how do you know? I said, yeah, because God spoke to me. Then I told you what he did. He removed money and poured on my feet. <laughs> green money. Green money. <laughs> I'm going to it. I'm going to get green money. No, I, I think I, I want red and then I go to, to green. Hallelujah. Anyway, you'll understand later. And he poured money and, and I took oil and anointed him. I said, you shall become a president. If you follow me. Mm. <laughs> I can't just give you a prophecy and I'm not a part of the glory. I say, I in fact, I see myself on that day when you are getting elevated. I see myself. <laughs> so far, I prophesied to two presidents to become. Who are they? They are come, they followed me, and all that. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, watch that. And then I told him. I said, hey, how come you are not in Cote d'Ivoire doing campaign now after the meeting of SVM? Why can you why can't you go in you start doing charity? You know I'm advising him as a prophet, no way becoming not the mentor. <laughs> I said, go to Cote d'Ivoire. Go to Cote d'Ivoire, do some charity, let your name start distributed. Make some noise so that I can empower you as well. The guy said to me, say, Oh no, 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 prophet, prophet, let me tell you. I said, what will you tell me? He said, prophet, the system is like this. Let no man lie to you. Africa is still colonized. I said, eh? I said there is no democracy. It's a lie. The Western, they are still dominating Africa. They are the one who still choose who to be president. You do your election. End that. Maybe you will vote your governor, you will vote in peace. But when it's come to presidents, he said it's still coming from the top. Thank you. So you see them before election, all of them, they are flying. Some of them private flying, private. I'm saying so much on that. They'll go where? <laughs> Some, they'll go to Europe, particularly where? France. That guy. Some do go all the way across France, they go where? America for the English. And I say, What are you doing here? I say, I'm in the center because I have a meeting with them. I say, if they say hey, I don't care. I don't know how many campaigns. I'll just must I'll just put a mask there. I'll come there, I just say hey, 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 hey. But I know already it is already. That's why when God said yes, that's what the Bible says. When God says yes, no man can say no. No, it makes sense. Ah, how about the one that is connected to God as a prophet? He said, you shall. That, that means it came from the one who said yes. I pray your word shall come to pass. Your word shall come to pass. Your word shall come to pass. So the guy said, Prophet, change your prayer. Just pray now this guy shall choose me because there's another one fighting also to get the position. He's also here. So let me just go ahead. I said, okay, let me hold it. Then prayer and understanding shifted. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can understand the king behind the scene, you'll be more powerful than the heavens and the earth. Rise where you are. God bless you. Did you get something? Please allow me tomorrow to come. You come early. We attack a lot of deep teaching. Okay? I have so much to explain to you about the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are some teaching whereby the moment you listen to it, you feel already elevated. Are you understanding me? Right now, your spirit has been elevated to the next level. And I pray that your finances, your understanding is shifted to the next level. Amen. Lift your hands where you are.
Say, Jesus, today, now, I really confirm and I affirm with all my heart that you are the King of Kings the king of kings and the lord of lords and the lord now i believe now i believe that surely that sure you are the soon coming king you are the soon coming now now you mandated me you mandated me elected me elected to me extend to extend the power the power the glory the glory the dominion the dominion of your kingdom of your kingdom on the earth on the earth here i am here i am use me use me fire prayer e shapara bada bada ba rakato sala pranda kata para ba e rakato sala para bada ba e pemimi de shanda kato rakata sala kata ba e pala bada sala para bada ba e pala kata kato bada ba e pemimi de shanda kata e pala bada sala ba e pala bada kata kata e pala kato sala para ba e pala bada bada ba
this market. I'm praying for you, the Lord, to extend His power through you, His righteousness through you in the business arena. Yes, Lord. Are you in the healthcare? Are you in the political arena with the government, ministry, or educations? Wherever where you are, Lord, I pray to extend his dominion through you. Yes. To extend his power and authority. His vision for the healthcare. His vision for the business market. His vision for the technique. Yes, Lord. Mountains. Yes. His vision for family mountain. His vision for the media mountain. Yes. The Lord vision, not your vision, but his visions. Yes, Lord. I pray that you shall be an extension of his grace. An extension of his love. An extension of his power. An extension of his dominion. On the earth. Oh God, thank you. An extension. Use me. Use me, Lord. You can tell him, use my children. Use, Lord. They shall be an extension of the perfect will of God. They shall be an extension of power and glory on the earth. Extend your vision through me, God. Extend that which is your vision through me, God. As you are praying, so say, God, raise your church. Yes, Lord. Raise your church. Yes, Lord. Let it sit on top of the mountain. Oh, yes. Let this gospel shine. Let many hear it. Yes. Let many hear and comprehend yes. and understand what is the will of God. Yes. Do that prayer. Yes. Oh, God, raise your church. Raise such messages that the world to hear. Yes. To penetrate places that men shall bow to the will of God. Yes. Do that prayer. Na 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 na
I desire to raise men in the political arena tomorrow. You might not have maybe a desire, or you might maybe ever think about that. The Lord said tomorrow is going to release a special anointing. You will be sent in the political arena. You will dominate. Number two, it should be an anointing service. Some of you, I mean, it is a time of raising. Are you understanding? God is desiring to raise man. And he just confirmed to me, he said, tomorrow I'm going to establish something upon men and women. Here. 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 Anyway. My dear God, the few that have come in my hands, they're sitting in powers. So this anointing is present here. But I'm praying that there will be a boy here who doesn't have an idea. You know those who don't even think that God will send them. You are the one I'm coming from. So that the world can know that God is able to raise men from the dust and put them in high places. Don't joke with that power. And all that you do, be present in the presence of God. By that oil coming upon you tomorrow, it doesn't matter which forest you find yourself. David, you shall come out. Or oh, let me say for the ladies, it doesn't matter which house you are living with Mordecai. When Mordecai is hosting you now, there is nothing that is telling that you are going to be a queen. But the anointing oil, I didn't say it, I had it. So we shall establish it. Amen. So tomorrow is a gift day where God is going to gift man with a splendor. And time will tell us what will take place tomorrow. The Lord bless you. And the Lord mercy be upon you. Now we are going to sow a kingdom sowing. Tell me about kingdom sowing. Kingdom sowing. Mm. I call your seed in the kingdom. Kingdom sowing. Hallelujah. So let's facilitate the people. Let's put it over there. Anything thousands or above, come drop it on the altar. A thousand and above, put it there. This is kingdom. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, come with it. You can tap it with your phone. Come ble God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. The politicians are coming. God bless you, sir. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people already God is raising. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, Rosa. Online also you can do the same. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, Rosa. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless, God bless, God bless. God bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Yes, just if your phone, you can just tap. Yes. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, son. Bless you, son. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the Lord bless you. God bless you. What a God we serve. Now lift your hands and just thank Him. God bless you, son. God bless you. Just thank Him. Lift your voice and thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. we're going to do this message that has been preached today right if you can go on your phone right now on your phone share this live youtube to as many to hear the gospel it's not to 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 increase maranatha no away from me i don't follow these things you know me i, I don't i don't follow fame fame things is not for me it's god who give me that but this is the understanding share the message of the kingdom enter youtube right now click in that button are we live did we have a good internet the good connection did people listen to me well they listen to me well thank you nancy god bless you so so please go right now share it share this life to someone and be a blessing and then from tonight before you to sleep make a covenant with god are you here with me come on did you hear me speaking here by the word of god right and also online make a covenant with god god i want at least one person tomorrow in the house of god for a significance of extending your power your vision through me in any area you desire to take me do you believe that if you believe so it shall be so for the glory of god Will you do so? Will you do so? How many do you have in your list of your number? Some of you have a thousand. Some of you two thousand. Some of you five hundred. Some of you a hundred. But the Lord is asking for just one. Thank you for those who are doing so. The Lord bless you. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, I present your people to you. You brought them safe. I release them in a higher level of safety of God's kingdom. They are untouchable from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. They are going out with this understanding that God is for us. No one and nothing shall stand against us. There are doors to start opening and great things to start happening in their life. The sick shall be healed. Deliverance to happen to your people. Tomorrow, bless us in a higher anointing glory. That your people shall testify my life has changed from glory to glory anoint your people tomorrow raise david raise esters raise men and women that shall carry the mandate and to bring the glory of your name on the earth i bless you i bless your night i bless your children i bless all that is yours and i declare that your journey tomorrow is blessed in the safetyness of the holy ghost 
and i pray in the name of jesus the son of the living god as we declare may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen say hi to someone and bless someone